Welcome, everybody, once again to Beyond the Podium. I'm Bob Roll, joined by Christian Vandeville. Day number four of La Vuelta a España. And I think we had a pretty good idea after today's stage, Christian, of what to expect, at least for the near future in the Vuelta a España. Primos Roglic rampaging to the stage win and the red jersey as race leader. Yeah, and it's going to be a lot of the same. It's a rollification, paper cuts by a million. Every time he comes to the finish line, every time he's sniffing around there, he's always going to be either winning second or third. And you, you could finish with him. But when you actually look at the results sheet a week from now, you're going to find yourself a minute behind him. So even though you're finishing the same time every day, like you mentioned in the show, before you know it, you're miles behind. It's just he has so much speed, so much grace. And the worst part about it, or everyone else in the Peloton, is that I don't think he was at his limit today and yes. i think it could have been much bigger and that's a scary thought going forward you seem to be the less dented by the heat and the climbs out of all of the gc contenders now he's leading but everybody else seemed to be on the absolute limit it was a very very steep climb to the final few hundred meters so big separation felix gall a good day Mikel landa struggled but did get back into the front group, a group of seven contesting the finish line, and Primo Roglic, the quickest. I think Leonard von Eichfeld had maybe the best chance to win the stage, but stopped pedaling. Just the, maybe three pedal strokes from the finish line and finished second. That's how fast La excuse me, Roglic was today. And that's Lana right off the back there. Did the best move possible, knowing that you're at your limit, beyond your limit, just to get back in. You take two seconds, take a breather, and then launch your attack. At least give yourself a nice buffer so you can finish on the same time. If you would have started from the back and they started their sprint, most likely he would have lost a little bit of time. So, so heads up move, very better move by Mikel Landa. He's going to hit it right on the right-hand side coming up here as they approach right around 250 meters yet to go. There he goes, landing on the right-hand side. But Van Elfo was the one who answered. And it was going to be tough. Like you said, it should have been a stage win for the young Belgian rider, but... You know, celebrating a little bit before the line. He will never do that ever again. The poor kid is going to be traumatized about today. He's never going to forget Primos. Probably going to hate him for life. There's a little hand up, right hand up to the right. And like, oh, no, here he comes right over your left hand shoulder. Uh, but when, until you go head to head with Primos, like you said on the show, exactly, you don't realize how fast he is at the finish line. And that's what Primos does when he's at his best. Let's be honest about that. And he's had his struggles in the past. And that when he gets into this position, let's hope that he is steady as she goes for the foreseeable future and seems to be physically, at least, Christian, the best in the Vuelta so far. Great time trial on day number one and then a big day today with the stage win and the time bonus also. That could play in. And like we say when we watch Roglic race when he is at his best, uh, you wake up in the morning and you can see him at the finish line. So you think to yourself, oh, yeah, well, I'm right there with the race leader. You look at the results and you add up all the time and oh, for a lot of riders over a minute behind Roglic already. Oh, Leonard von Eiffel, he's already mad at himself. Right when he raised his hand, he was like, oh, no, <laughs> who is that on my shoulder? The quickest dude in these always, situations we've seen. It's in always a long funny that they time. actually Primo's cussed in English too, coming across the line. You if you're a good lip reader, you know exactly <laughs> what he was saying as he's coming across the line there. <laughs> but it's always in English, even if you're your Flemish is your natural tongue. No, that, that was definitely English coming across the line there for Van Uh he's never gonna do that again. But and let's not forget about Primos' team as well, Bob. That was incredible yeah. what they did. And Siri he that was not nice to be on the front here today, and that's gonna leave a mark. Luckily, tomorrow is the easiest day of this entire Vuelta. So sprinters back to the four, but they had the confidence. And in the, I love the, the interview afterwards, well, Roglic, they asked him about, what did you think about putting your guys in the front? He's like, well, they didn't give me the option. They, this was just the plan put forth by the team. And the plan was, you know, to give him the confidence, to show that we back you 100% and that you can do this. And it obviously works. And they pushed his hand just a little bit. Uh, so the team was fantastic there today. They were there all day long. So we'll we'll see what exactly could go in, the, in going forward. But really, the biggest thing he needs to do is stay upright. Um, I mean, I hate to bring it up, but it's true. And the biggest problem that he's had in the past 
is not his racing prowess, his strength, or his savvy. It's all about him staying upright. Well, the team will be uh, hoping that happens for the rest of the Vuelta for Primoz Roglic, that's for sure. For the American riders, maybe a little bit off his best was Sepp Kuss, Christian. Uh, Brandon McNulty, not bad. Matthew Riccatello, a great day. And I think we're going to be seeing a lot of that type of results from Matthew Riccatello in the Grand Tours every time the road kicks up steeply like it did today. Matthew rode out of his skin. I mean, he's 22 years old. He's been riding well. He rode a great Giro d'Italia last year. He rode a great Tour of Swiss this year. And he really put all of his eggs in one basket going for the Vuelta this year. So for him to be in that top six when it really was a hard, hard race here today with a lot of incredible riders behind him, we make 4x the amount of salary he makes. This is looking really good to start off the Vuelta. He didn't have a fantastic time trial. He's a small guy. He only weighs 121 pounds. Dead flat time trial. We didn't expect him to have a great time trial. So he's going to be working his way up in the general classification. So where this leads to, who knows? But for right now, I'm sure he's very happy. And his team is very happy. And let's not forget about his teammate, George Bennett, was also in the top 10 as well. So Ismail Premier Tech, fantastic start to this race. And this is all about climbers here. The climbers are so deep. There's going to be a lot of aggressive racing, especially when we have some intermediate climbs where there's going to be attacking racers. Um, but even with Sepp Kuss, even though he lost that 28 seconds today, I, I don't think it, it's over for any of those riders who lost that 20, 30 seconds today. I think there's a lot of what's still yet to the race. Today was a little bit different how steep it was. I mean, up to 20% grades in the heat, but the heat is here to stay. That's here yeah. for the entirety of this nine days of racing. And until they leave the south of Spain, it's going to be brutal. And if you do not react well to the heat, like some of these riders that look like they have having a hard time, especially Carapaz today, did not look yeah. well, um, that's going to be a, a big hindrance to many riders. And you can't change that. And Brandon McNulty, the first leader of the Volta, the American, a pretty solid day. Seventh in the overall standings. Um, maybe a wild card for UAE to play. Send him up the road. Put the pressure on the Red Bull Bora team of Primoz Roglic. Absolutely. Why not? I mean, in, not tomorrow, of course, but in the future, no. yeah. I mean, Thursday's stage is no joke. We're going right back up over 12,000 feet of climbing again. So we got an easy day tomorrow, recover a little bit, and it's packed to the salt mines yet again on Thursday. So, yeah, I, I like that, Bob. I like that mentality. I mean, they have the depth in their squad. I mean, Jay Vines, another rider. Maybe he went a little bit too easy to towards the finish line after he'd done his job, but he was flying today on the front. So they, they have some cards to play. Uh, Yates is another rider that comes to mind. I was a little bit disappointed in what he was like today, but you just never know. On that first mountaintop finish in a Grand Tour, you just never know who's going to be at the forefront. And the biggest surprise for me, when the pleasant surprise is safe, like you mentioned, Matthew Riccatello for sure. And the biggest surprise on the negative side would probably been Yates today. Well, tomorrow, the one and only day on paper for the sprinters. Chance, as always, in the vault for the breakaway to succeed. Uh, but dead flat miles before the finish line. Some rollers before we get into Sevilla. Uh, but a big battle unfolding for the green jersey as points leader also between Caden Groves and Wout Van Aert. We're going to see plenty of that tomorrow, Christian. Oh, plenty, especially with that sprint with 25 kilometers to go. That's going to be interesting to see who's at the front there. And like you said, nothing to talk about. No points on offer for the KOM jersey. It's all about the sprinters tomorrow. And yes, of course, they can go and try to play their hand into the breakaway. But I think considering how hard this vault is, and especially in modern cycle, we've been saying, especially in the Tour de France, when they have a day that is not any big objectives apart from a sprint, they're going to stand down tomorrow. So it's going to be a long day for the guys. It's going to be hot yet again. So it's a matter of recovering and getting ready for Thursday's day, especially if you're a general classification runner. Well, 8.50 a.m. tomorrow. We'll start a day on paper for the sprinters. We'll see how that plays out throughout. No crosswinds predicted. So watch for Van Art and, of course, Caden Groves. Both of them stage winners, by the way. So uh, best of the sprinters maybe we'll see tomorrow. And then after that, a long, long time before the sprinters will have a chance, but maybe for Wout Van Aert, a chance thereafter to go in the breakaway. Corbin Strong, and uh, he could be up there also. So I think we will see the sprinters, one of their probably last chances to have a stage win. So 
maybe Alpacin does the work throughout the stage, Christian. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a pretty rough statement. Stage five is your last opportunity, really, for a sprinter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's a good reason why there's men, not too many sprinters coming to this race and not too many enforcements for the sprinters either. So, yeah, I mean, maybe an opportunity considering how they race or how hard and how difficult on paper this Volta is. I mean, this is easily the hardest that we've seen in decades, maybe the hardest ever, especially with the heat combined into, like you mentioned earlier. Um, yeah, I, I think, but I do believe that Alps and the Kunis going to really go for it tomorrow. They, they, that's their main objective here is to get another stage win. They're not going to be happy with just one. And it's all tied up, like you mentioned. So 1-1. One, one. Um, but, yeah, if I'm a betting man, I, I think I'm going to go with Caden tomorrow. Um, but you never know. I mean, Wow looks really strong right now. And if it's a hard sprint, what changed with yesterday was Victor Campanaris. He messed up everything for that squad. Really going that hard. And the lead-out riders had to go that early and put everyone on the limit. And if you're being put on the limit, guess who's not on the limit? Wow. So yeah, this, if that doesn't change, it, it would go to Wout. But I, I don't think that Victor's going to be doing that every stage. Maybe. I mean, he's going to Wout's team next year. Maybe it's like, hey, buddy, you want to attack again? I'll buy the beers next year for you. <laughs> 8.50 a.m. for stage number five into Sevilla tomorrow. And the, like we said, the day for, excuse me, on Peacock, day for the sprinters. And thank you, Christian. Uh, great to join you as always on Beyond the Podium and of course the coverage on Peacock of La Vuelta 8.50 a.m. Eastern Time everybody see you tomorrow for all your cycling content year round subscribe to NBC Sports YouTube page we got it all